Believers' Successes and Keys for Successful Living Let us pray. Dear Father, hello be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and let your will be done, even here and now. Lord, speak to your people, for they are waiting to hear you. By this word of yours, every listener begins to enjoy super and unrestricted successes, even in the areas where they have previously failed. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. God has ordained believers for success and a successful life. And the Bible has been very clear about it and has consistently affirmed it. The Bible has also been explicit on what it takes for a believer to succeed and achieve success in any area of life that God has ordained for them to excel in. Without the devil being in the equation. From various scriptures, there are three basic factors or ingredients that guarantee a believer true and all-round success. These are, 1. Recognition of God as our true and only source of success. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. Number 2. Being courageous, bold and fearless as we walk with the consciousness of God. And number three, being obedient to divine instructions, laws, the truths of God, principles and guidelines. Now, starting with number one, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 20. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, that flow out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you, to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. From the foregoing, we can see that by default, God created and has positioned us for super success, prosperity, and comfort. God has given us all that we need and all that it will take for us to succeed. But however, he warned us that, for us to maintain and sustain this grandeur of comfort, progress, and prosperity, we must always know and be conscious in our minds that it is God who is the cause and reason for all that we have. And as such, we should conscientiously remember and acknowledge him in words and in action as our sole source and enabler in all that we have. And it is not a difficult thing to do nor is it a burdensome, unfair, or taskmaster demand. 
Of course, not at all. And therefore, neglect of this or forgetfulness of God as the source of our every success is a call to an invitation to failure. In Proverbs chapter 3, from verses 5 to 10, this point was again emphatically emphasized. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh, and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions, and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. And on point number two, which is about bravery, boldness, and courage in walking with God. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Lack of courage, timidity, and fearfulness is an invitation to failure and divinity abandonment. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And elsewhere in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17, Thou therefore gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee, be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. So giving in to fear and discouragement in your walk with God is a call for abandonment and subscription to another spirit, other than God's spirit. For the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. And elsewhere in Proverbs 28 verse 1, the Bible says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So you have got to be bold, unmovable in your faith, and trust in God to see him bring to pass all that you are believing him for. Praise God. And in point number three, obedience to God and his words, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, from verses 1 through 13. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kine, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. 
The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. So from the foregoing, we can see that God's demands to make a person successful are that 1. He must be remembered and acknowledged. God does not like His glory to be shared, let alone given to any other entity or person. He says in Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So God doesn't share His glory with others. Therefore, if one's success and or prosperity are not going to bring God glory, God may not support or be involved in them. And secondly, our God is mighty, mightier than anything mighty. He is the perfect definition of strength, might, courage, and boldness. And as is commonly said, like breeds like. God wants us to possess and display these traits as proof and signs that we are His and have faith and trust in Him. As a matter of fact, Jesus is described as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And a very distinguishing character that comes to mind whenever a lion is mentioned is its boldness and strength. Therefore, as a believer that God will be delighted in and support your success, you have got to be bold and courageous. God told Jeremiah explicitly in Jeremiah 1 verse 17, which we have read earlier, that if he developed cold feet and a lack of courage, that would risk his abandonment and withdrawal of his support. Every man with whom God has ever worked has heard his instruction to be fearless and courageous throughout the scriptures. We saw that with Abraham, Moses, Joshua, and Jeremiah. I can go on and on, but the principle has always been and remains the same, so fear not. And finally, obedience is very important and fundamental to every Christian's success. Without obedience, other laws and principles could be incapacitated from functioning as they are supposed to. So the functionality of other virtues is predicated on conscious obedience to the divine laws, guidelines, and truths of God. All things being equal, these three go together in parapesu for a superlative Christian success. The absence of one inadvertently affects the efficiency and success of another. So all three have to be in place for better Christian success. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, thank you yet again for another privilege and opportunity to make your will and word known. Lord bless everyone that has listened to your word and caused them to experience successes in every area of their lives that they desire success in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the home, marriage, business, career, children and engagements of every listener with good success in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you dear Father, for the answer. The confidence we have is that whenever we pray, you hear and answer us. Thank you once more Lord, for answering us, for in the name of Jesus Christ the Redeemer we pray. Amen.